So welcome everybody, it's New Year's Day 2014, so I might be sounding a bit blurry today, um, but this is the first training module number 301 for the Lush One Inca board. The Inca is the third module of the Lush One modular synthesizer, and it's all about signal processing and uh, providing new ways to control signals and bringing them out to external systems. Uh, so I've got a Lush One Inca board here in my big Lush One setup. Uh, I'm just going to talk you through the main elements of it. So the most physically obvious thing is probably the joystick down in this corner. Um, this is a, uh, an Xbox style uh, thumbstick. Uh, and provides analog outputs as well as a button press. Um, the other big component on the left hand side here we call the mixer signal processor um, and this takes up to four inputs and sums them together into either a DC output that can be used for control voltages or an AC output which can be used for audio signals and we'll see a lot more about using this in the next couple of modules. Um, the other features we've got on the Inca, um, we've got a noise source here, so this is a, a random noise. Uh, again we can use it as a signal or a control voltage. Um, using it as a signal provides a range of percussive sounds. Um, up here we've got a sample and hold feature. So what the sample and hold does is take an input and based on a gate in signal it will sample the input whenever the gate uh, goes high and we produce a, an output which is uh, a set of samples of the incoming signal. In order to help us drive that you normally need a kind of square wave low frequency oscillator and we've got one on the board here uh, together with a gate in to control it. Now the other thing that people frequently ask me about the Lush One is can we connect it to uh, external Eurorack modules and on the Lush One Inca we've got a 3.5mm uh, vertically mounted output here with a connector to a Lush One style 2mm banana plug. Um, so that's really there to particularly help people that want to interconnect the Lush One to uh, Eurorack modules but of course can be used for anybody that wants to use uh, three and a half mil uh, jack outputs. So those are the kind of key features of the Lush One. Um, what I'm going to move on to talk about now is particularly the joystick module. Let's explore the features of the Lush One Inca in more detail. We're going to start with the joystick and this provides two control voltage levels, so that's 0 to 5 volt analog outputs based on the X motion and the Y motion. And it's a normal Xbox style thumbstick. You can also press it, which provides a button output here. What I've done is patch the X and Y controls into the control voltages on the two oscillators on the Lush One base and these are patched to the signal input and a control voltage input on the filter and through to the output and uh, this is shown in the slide package. Um, I'm just going to power this on now. Um, this is actually prototype uh, version 2 Lush One software which remembers settings from the uh, control switches um, but we've set oscillator 2 into a, a continuous oscillation mode um, and we've set the control voltage mode to CV dash H. So power it on. Now we hear the beats, let's uh, fiddle around with the joystick and see how that goes. Well, 
well, you can see there, joystick gives you pretty flexible control of the two parameters. Um, in this setup, the parameters are going over their full range. So it goes from very high and very fast uh, LFOs to very low notes and very slow LFOs. What we're going to look at next is how we use the signal processor to limit the range of these inputs and provide you more precise control over a narrower range. This is a really flexible piece of equipment. You can use it to add inputs, to find the difference between inputs, uh, to convert control voltages into audio signals and vice versa, uh, to manipulate control voltages to generate different effects, or to connect or interface the Lush One to external systems, either to help process external inputs or to take Lush One signals and map them into the format needed for external systems. Um, to start off with, we're just going to focus on one aspect of it, which is using it as a manipulation tool for a Lush One control voltage. Uh, we're going to take the example of changing the joystick behavior so instead of controlling the full frequency range of an oscillator uh, we have more precise control over a narrower frequency range but before we do that let's just focus on understanding how the signal processor mixer works we've got four inputs down this side down the left the first two are non-inverting inputs, so a positive voltage here will generate a positive output. And the second two are inverting inputs, so a positive voltage there will generate a negative output. With two outputs, we have a DC output at the top, which is primarily for control voltages, and an AC output at the bottom, which uh, can be used for signals. Each of these four inputs has a corresponding gain control and we also have a DC offset control. Now we're going to start by looking at the operation of DC offset and also the two LEDs next to the DC output which provide an indication of the voltage level. So you can see on the screen that I've got a voltmeter wired up to the DC output and it's the minute it's reading about plus 0.06 volts, so quite low. Um, this DC offset, well we've got no inputs connected, so we've got nothing coming from the input side. This DC offset is really the only thing that's affecting the output of the uh, mixer at the moment. At the minute it's just a little bit above the center position. And as you do, might expect, that's generating a positive output. Um, if I turn it round to the right, we add more positive output voltage and you'll see that the output voltage is rising and eventually it peaks out at a maximum DC offset of about well about plus 5 but 0.48 in this case. If you're looking at the LED you'll also see that as I turn it as I turn this towards the center and we get close to zero volts that LED fades. Um, as we turn it up the LED gets brighter and a maximum brightness is achieved at around plus 5 volts. Okay, I'm going to return this to the center and you'll see the voltage drops to zero. And now I'm going to turn it the other way towards the left and you'll see that the output voltage starts to go negative and also the top LED indicating a positive output goes out and the bottom LED which indicates a negative output starts to light up. And indeed, we can turn this all the way to the left and we get uh, about minus 5, minus 4.66, in this case, volts on the output. So all this DC offset does is to provide a fixed DC amount coming to this DC output. And you'll see how these LEDs can guide you as to what voltage is coming out. If you really want to get a number, you've got to put a meter on it. But if you just want a kind of feeling for the output, uh, then the LEDs are useful. Um, particularly if the, for example, if you only want a positive output, then just check the bottom LED and make sure that's not lighting up at all. Um, and then you'll be sort of fairly comfortable that you're providing a positive output here. Um, the LEDs are kind of very kind of easy to understand for static voltages. Um, when you have uh, oscillating voltages, particularly 
audio frequency oscillating voltages, then your persistence of vision starts to come in. And for example, if you have a voltage which is going uh, positive to negative um, very quickly, you'll see both LEDs apparently lighting up. So you just need to be aware of that effect. But uh, I think with a bit of practice, you can interpret the LEDs quite successfully. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to patch one axis of the joystick. I'm going to take the Y output into the input, first input of the mixer. I'm just going to set this, turn the gain on that input right down to zero uh, and just zero the, um, zero the output approximately. So that's fairly close to zero coming on now. Okay, at the minute we've got the gain zero, so if I move this joystick, as you'd expect, there's no real difference in the output. But if I start to turn this gain up, you'll see, first of all, the voltage starts to rise. That's because when the joystick is in the center position, it's providing two and a half volts uh, as an input. Um, and as I move the joystick now, you'll see the output voltage is ranging between uh, about zero and uh, plus 2.7 so that position gain position here is about uh, a half um, the range of these gain controls is uh, nominally 0 to about times 3 so uh, if you turn them up to about a third you'll get a gain of about 1 in fact we can sort of judge it on this case because we just want to set it to an output of about 2.5 uh, when the joystick is in the center position. So about there you should get a range between about zero and yeah just a bit under five which is what you would expect. Um, the, there is a limit to the DC output um, which is determined really by the supply voltage of the equipment. Um, it clips between about minus 8 volts and plus 8 volts. So I've just turned the gain up to maximum. Uh, I'll turn the DC offset up to maximum as well. So on this one, the maximum voltage we're getting out is uh, about 8 volts. Um, you can move that a little bit, but you'll see you can't increase it beyond that clipping amount. So just be aware that you can't sort of get infinite voltages out of these things. It's limited what you can do. Um, but I think minus 8 to plus 8 is good enough for most pieces of equipment. Now the other thing that you might notice here is normally in the Lush one our control voltages go from 0 to 5 volts and I've just said that we can produce where well, you've seen it go from sort of uh, minus 5 to plus 5 volts in fact it can go from minus 8 volts to plus 8 volts uh, so the thing to be careful of is when you connect the DC output of this signal processor to a control voltage input just make sure you're not overloading that control voltage input by sending it a voltage which is inappropriate. Um, some of the CV inputs like the ones on the filter are pretty tolerant of most voltages um, but particularly the CV inputs to the oscillator are kind of sensitive because they're going through the analog to digital converter on the AVR microcontroller uh, and this really doesn't like voltages that go outside the range 0 to 5 volts so particularly if you're patching to those inputs uh, just be very careful about your voltages coming on the uh, output of the control voltage uh, output of the signal processor um, and perhaps at least certainly check it with the LEDs and perhaps check it with a meter to, to, to double check. So just to recap what we're doing here, we're using one input and by controlling the gain I can move the range of this from, uh, well let's just set this to about two and a half central position. There we go. So at the minute I'm getting about plus one and a half volts and minus one and a half volts off that center. Um, if I turn the gain down, I'm just going to set the offset again to recenter it. Um, we will have a smaller range, or I can turn the gain up. Again, recenter the offset to two and a half. 
to have a bigger range so that's going in fact all the way to 5 volts um, so if you had more than one input then each input would be multiplied by its gain and summed together and then the DC offset is added to the output so in this case because we're providing a positive input to this uh, input all the time then uh, if you change the gain that also changes the uh, DC output so you need to recenter the offset each time uh, well, what we can do with this is by setting the offset and the gain appropriately we can focus the range of this control voltage so instead of going all the way from 0 to 5 volts as it does if you come off the joystick directly you focus the control voltage on a particular sub part of its range uh, and that will give you finer control over the uh, thing you're trying to manipulate. So what I'm going to do now is to patch this up um, to provide an input to the uh, oscillator control voltages and uh, just show you how that works in practice. Right, what I've done here is I've patched the X output of the joystick is still going into the control voltage for oscillator 1 um, but the Y output I've patched through the signal processor and then the output DC output of the signal processor is going through to the control voltage for oscillator 2. And I would very much recommend that you check the voltage range on this DC output before you make that kind of patch. Um, I've cheated and preset this so I know it's safe. Um, the key thing to obviously look for is that you're always providing a positive voltage um, from this output so only the top LED should ever light. Um, right, I'm going to switch this on and show you what it's doing. So the x-axis still provides the full range of the primary oscillator, but the low frequency sound now goes on a much more limited range, so we've only got fairly fast low frequency oscillations here. So you can manipulate this a bit more carefully and precisely as far as the LFO goes, giving you more control over the range of sounds that you're working on. And let's turn it off. So that really concludes the introduction to the Lush One Inca and particularly the signal processor and the joystick. Um, what we're going to look at next time is the signal processor being used to combine inputs. Um, so both adding both control voltages and adding audio signals. Until then, I hope you have fun playing with the joystick. Remember, you can use it for any of the control voltages. And also you can, excuse me, and also you can apply the, uh, apply the signal processor to manipulate any control voltage output from the Lush One. So if you have a contour module, you can use it to manipulate, uh, for example, the ADSR output if you want to do that. Uh, so until next time, have a good one.